In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. People exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of your adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, Indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God 
with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and my cup you it is who hold fast my lot Lord you who show us the path of life I bless the Lord who counsels me even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, who will show us the path? Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you who show us the path of life, you will show me the path.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed for your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or, or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Clopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those, then some of those went with us to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. <clears throat> and he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that While he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? While he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found to gather together the eleven and those with them who were saying, 
the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then they recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, on behalf of uh, the uh, Father Fleck and our seminarians, uh, I want to express my gratitude to you, indeed uh, my love to you as parishioners for your support, for your encouragement, for your generosity, uh, and your patience during these difficult days of the coronavirus. Uh, we are in it together, and the um, sun is shining, and I think some good news will be coming our way before long. So we uh, continue to pray for each other and uh, love each other. So uh, from the second reading, I'd like to focus on the word uh, sojourners. It came, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17. Conduct yourselves with reverence during this time of your sojourning. Recall that you are ransomed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, when I first came to Martyrs uh, about 12 years ago, I quickly met a group from Light to the World that called themselves the Sojourners. Uh, Jack and friend Seta Gilstorf, and probably about six couples at the time. And coincidentally, last Sunday, uh, they were out in the uh, common uh, area outside the church in our courtyard, and they were six feet apart, of course, in a big circle. And that group is still meeting today. I think they try to meet at least every other week or certainly every month, as they have for maybe 15 years or so. Uh, some have come and some have gone, but nonetheless, this is a, uh, a great example of community within our parish of North American Martyrs. And uh, they were studying something. I can't remember. Uh, the seminarians told me what they were studying, but nonetheless, uh, they study, they pray together, they pray for each other. I know when hardship comes or something comes up that they need prayer for, they, they go to each other for that kind of uh, community uh, support. So, sojourners, uh, what does that mean? Uh, well, it, it means people basically on exile or people on pilgrimage in a foreign land. We're all sojourners. We're all on this uh, pilgrimage. And the reason we're foreigners is because this world is not our eternal homeland. This is not heaven. We are in a foreign land. And at times like uh, during the pandemic, it seems like we're maybe even more foreigners, wearing masks, distancing each other from, from our, each other, uh, unable to go where we want to go, where we'd like to go. And so we are clearly on a pilgrimage and uh, praying for each other, but sticking together. And so, uh, like the two disciples on the road uh, from Emmaus to Jerusalem, we are all also called to hear the word of God speak to us, to uh, nourish us, to inspire us. On the way, uh, they recounted all, Jesus recounted to them all the Old Testament scriptures that referred to him and that came to fulfillment in Jesus Christ himself, even though they didn't recognize it was him uh, that was speaking to them. And then, of course, uh, they get to their destination and they say, um, do you want to stay with us? Uh, and he does. And then in the familiar action of the breaking of the bread, in that familiar action of, of Christ turning to his Father in prayer, and thanking God as Father in a Eucharistic way, uh, their eyes are opened and they recognize that this is Jesus Christ. This is the only Son of God who has ransomed us all from sin and through his blood being shed, he has gained for us all eternal life. 
and then he disappears from them. Um, there's no reason for him to be present in two ways. If he's there in the breaking of the bread and the Eucharist, you don't need his physical post-resurrection presence. So we come to him in word and are nourished by his word, and we come to him also in the breaking of the bread. In the Eucharist, he comes to nourish us. What's more, he remains with us, present in the tabernacle, in that humble appearance of Eucharistic bread. He uh, there is there in the bread of thanksgiving. Uh, I want to thank our parishioners who have responded so beautifully to our new hours of adoration that we just started this past uh, week from 8 until 8. It's wonderful to look into the church at any time and see six or seven or eight people here uh, praying uh, every hour of the, of the day from 8 to 8. So we uh, are all on this, this pilgrimage together. We're on this journey. We are in exile. And, uh, and nonetheless, we are sojourners all together uh, praying uh, for each other, praying for each other, and uh, persevering, hearing the word of God, receiving the Eucharist, albeit uh, spiritually uh, for everyone at this time, but nonetheless, with God in the breaking of the bread. So God love you. God bless you all. We continue to pray for each other. <clears throat> we stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, and Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as brothers and sisters in Christ, we turn now to our Heavenly Father, humbly asking him to hear these in all of our prayers. For the Pope and all pastors, that they guard the Lord's flock with patient love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that justice and peace guide their present and future action, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the sick and suffering, that they receive healing, hope, and tender love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all health professionals and caregivers, that Jesus comfort and strengthen them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish family and all who show us how to serve God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intention of which this Mass is being offered and for the needs of all here present for which we now pause to pray.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the coronavirus, for all who have died, those who are suffering, struggling in one way or another, that God will bless them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our second graders who were preparing to receive First Holy Communion on this day today, that God will stay close to them and fill them with continued longing for the Holy Eucharist and uh, they be able to receive the Lord before long. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask these prayers in the name of uh, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. At this time, it's my privilege to offer a blessing for a couple who's celebrating their 10th anniversary uh, yesterday, and uh, she happens to be the one playing music behind the scene here, and she asked if she could have her husband come too, so... I said, yes, because we're still under 10. So i uh, sorry your children cannot come, but I'm very happy that you have a beautiful family. Please step forth and let me give you a blessing of the church. Almighty and eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church as his spouse. Look now with favor on Stacy and Andrew, whom you have united in marriage 10 years ago today, as they ask for your help and the protection of the Virgin Mary. They pray that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other, that they will resolve, continue to resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near to help them. And in their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. In their joys, let them see that you are the source and completion of every happiness. Bless them and all the children they have been blessed with and keep them always close to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. amen. May God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, to make we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all those who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying the homage, their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. 
Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed past, and the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. And the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son, as you did at the wedding at Cana, 
Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust in this time of trial and testing. Teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection and keep us the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. You please join me in praying a Hail Mary for all of those who are sick, uh, names listed in our bulletin, and uh, including people uh, Mildred Gertis, Gladys Kozashek, Frank Kohout, Levon Butner, Jill Lee, Diane Fry, Bob and Roberta Cook, Barb and Jean Roth, Alan Wissink, and many others who have asked for our prayers. We continue to pray for our Bishop James Conley. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh, oh, oh. 